that was nice. It's a Saturday, and I just left recoil because I had to resupply. So luckily, um, Larry's brother's in town, and they were eating breakfast. Larry's big brother, who uh, decided to take up cattle ranching in Belize when land prices were super low. So hopefully he can recover those. It was much tougher than he imagined though, and, and he's older than he <laughs> wants to be, but aren't we all? So, but uh, it was good to see him and, and Brian and uh, old times, old deals. Yeah, um, Stephen was, uh, Stephen has always been basically doing my job, <laughs> what I do for Larry. Um, and recoil now. Um, Steven uh, had hookups with uh, the testing lab. I forget his name is, I think it's Gary Springay. He's out there in East Mesa. And uh, I, you know, whatever, I, 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 I don't really, there's a couple things that he did that I don't like, that's what, that's what I'm saying. So, but um, that's, he, he was very popular with a lot of the local companies and also with some of the new startups that needed you know actual specs and actual testing and you know weren't going to fudge them because sometimes you know when you buy them from the factory and then you ask the factory to test them then the the factory kind of you know uh <laughs> isn't as honest as you would probably like so because that's what and that's what's dumb on china's part because you know when the numbers come back as far as reliability goes you know, if it has a you know 20%, 30%, or even 50% failure rate, you're gonna know. You know, and and, and it's it's I don't know that, but that's the way. Sometimes things go with manufacturing, and and China's in charge of that, so that's how it goes sometimes. But um, no, I was uh, I just hit him up and and uh, hit Larry up and oh I'm sorry, let me finish that. Uh, Steven used to be in charge of uh, he would hit up Gary and just buy in one big lot uh, all the amps and woofers that Gary uh, would test for the industry. And uh, and then, you know, flip it. So, and then any kind of returns or B-stock or closeouts or whatever, um, Stephen would kind of hustle and, and flip for them. So I remember they were the, probably the biggest deal and Fuck me, I, I, I blew it. I, I, sh I should have just done more work. But um, right, I think it was right after the recession, uh, JL Audio refused um, an accessories order. And, and the factory was like, what the fuck you want us to do with, you know, I think it was like two, two or three containers full of like high-end... Uh, four channel wire and some other stuff and so because um, JL was like nope we don't want those you know because if you accept them you got to pay for them and uh, JL's like nope we don't want them and so the factory was like well we made them somebody's got to buy these and so I think Steven ended up flipping them to Parts Express which I should have done and I was perfectly capable of but I didn't think of that because I was like let me just see if I can post them you know but um lesson learned and then you can probably still that's what one thing I do like about Parts Express is that uh, they keep their um, old web pages up um, because you know it still gets hits and it's all it, it's really great for information same thing with Crutchfield and uh, a couple other web oh and Sonic Electronics they always keep up the old websites even though the, the product is discontinued but it's good for information and pictures and things like that so but uh, all right motorcycle guy um, but uh, yeah, they were uh, four channel and I think maybe some two channel uh, high end RCAs and they Parts Express blew them out. I think the cost on them was like five bucks and then I think he sold them for I want to say 17 and then Parts Express was selling them for probably 30 to 40 a set and so I'm sure JL Audio was kind of upset about it, but it's like mm, pay your bills, dude. That's you know, you're, you're the you're the princess, you're the princess bride, fucking act like it, you know, you got the money, but, uh, yeah, well, I talked about this a couple weeks ago, it was, um, 
what do you call it, uh, Orion had, I guess, filed for bankruptcy uh, in February, and people were seeing, uh, you know, you can't call it Orion because the, it's the trademark, and it's they get more upset about the trademark than they do the actual product because um, a lot of times that tooling is, <clears throat> is held in trust, for, for lack of a better word. Uh, it's, it's definitely in the possession of China because that's where all the frames are made. Um, but uh, once a company like that files for bankruptcy, they lose a lot of their deals uh, exclusivity. And so somebody was on Alibaba and was seeing, you know, brand new Orion HTCA uh, subwoofers for sale. And, you know, China's not going to sit there and eat it. Like, fuck no, they're going to fucking liquidate that shit. So, and then they get, they get a little taste of that retail life and they go, Ooh, yeah, we like that. So, but you know, China always has a hard time with retail because they, uh, <laughs> they don't know what retail customers want and, and China gets kind of lazy and impatient with retail customers, which I do too. Uh, somebody was asking me the other day, I, I picked up a, uh, on the way back, I met somebody this morning and on the way back, I stopped at the Goodwill and I found a pair of Wharfdales. Uh, which I think the terminals are a little fucked up on them. And then the tweeters, I think, are probably blown because, you know, some rich guy gave them to his grandson and his grandson fucking beat the shit out of him. But other than that, they look pretty good. And I picked them up the pair for only 25 bucks. And I, I was like, fuck, if the, the parts alone would, you know, do that. But somebody was asking me the other day, like, why I don't um, sell to the collectors. And, I, and because the, here's the reason I don't sell to collectors. Collectors are fucking crazy. <laughs> and I want to, I want to, I, I, it's already bad enough for people that want to put, you know, um, 500 amp hours of, of lithium in their fucking car and, you know, uh, you know, dozens of kilowatts of, of power and, and subwoofers. So that, to me, that's, that's the crazy enough. I don't want that crazy. The problem with collectors is, is, you, it, it's so weird because you can't be super honest with them. Okay, so let's say let's take a really good collector's item like a, a PPI Art Series A1200. Okay, A1200.2 or whatever it was. I think it was the A1200, and then the second one version was the A1200.2. So there was a moment where after the auction in 2003, the powder coat company Precision, which was also named Precision Powder Coat. Um, and some of the guys from Orion ended up uh, working for Precision Powder Coat and now own it, uh, Pat and Paul. So, um, but I got to know those guys over the years. And one of the things that they offered me at one, or they, I didn't say they offered me, they they told me about after the fact. Um, yeah, because that one really burned. But they had the original uh, screen print um, graphics for screen printing the top of the PPI amps. And they threw them all away. <laughs> so okay, so let's take an A1200, and it's beat. It's just beat up, all right. It's, it's just it's it's scratched up. It's it's worn, you know, blah blah blah. So let's say I stripped it completely, and I had the original graphics, and I had the original powder coat company, which which was Western, by the way, Western powder coat. Not that that makes a difference, but that yeah, some of the old PPI amps, if you take out the board, it has a little W on the inside, and that's because it was done by Western. So, but. Um, that was just like their little mark, and and then if you if you look in them, uh, a lot of the PPI amps they didn't even bother to scrape away the uh, powder coat where the the MOSFETs lay down, <laughs> and then they just jizz the whole thing up with uh, heat sink compound. But you know when you test every one of them and you have a one percent failure rate, you know who gives a fuck? So, but uh, so let's say I strip it all the way down, uh, I even polish it up, and then I get it powder coated, you know the same white that it was back then. And then I even screen print it, you know. Is that original? No, it's a it's a refinish. And so, and if if I'm honest with people, people get upset. It's the weirdest thing. So and then there's also other uh, like amp amp repair guys that will work on these old amps, and you know they'll go through them and make sure they're good. And then sometimes they can do upgrades and all that kind of stuff on them. And there's some collectors that are okay with that there's other collectors that are like no it has to be original you got to have the factory seal and all this kind of stuff so if the people are so finicky on that stuff i'd rather not deal with them and i've had a lot of people just freak out when i you know 
and I, I, you know, I give them a good deal, but then they, you know, there's a little work involved and all this kind of stuff. And they're like, no, so, you know, they're just looking for unicorns. And then it's like, dude, there's a reason why those are called unicorns. They don't really, they don't exist. So, and, and if you happen to do find, uh, you know, a dead unicorn, you, you better be willing to pay. But see, th those guys are crazy. And what they're, they're, what they're really after is the deal, right? If you remember Pretty Woman, uh, Jason, uh, oh shit, I forgot his last name. He played uh, on Seinfeld. Um, Jason uh, in that movie, dude, his character is fucking, you know, vicious. And that's what he's there for. He's there for the kill. And there's a lot of guys like that that are there for the kill. Like, I used to get a lot of those guys where they'd show up and they, you know, whatever, there's some drug dealer, so they think they're a big shot because, you know, everybody wants to suck his dick. And then, you know, I give him, you know, a thousand dollar deal and he's like, I, you know, and I'm, I'm like, I got it priced at say $300. And he's like, I'll give you two, two right now, two. And I'm like, no, you know, and then, and then they get mad that I say no. So what, that's what they really want. They want to just dominate. They want to come in and, and dominate people. So, um, but you know, you keep doing a lot of transactions and you'll, you'll come across those kind of people. And, uh, so if you can help it, don't deal with them. Right. That's my advice. Um, the problem is, is that once, once you, once you give them a taste of blood, they want to come back and just in, 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 uh, engulf you and, and consume you and, uh, you know, make you their bitch as they say. So, uh, not recommended, right? Unless, I don't know, unless you're into that. So you want to be somebody's punk ass bitch, you know, go for it. Um, <laughs> we all have our survival skills, right? So, but, um, no, I, I was, uh, sometimes I can't always respond to the comments and, and stuff like that. And so that's why I like to just do it in the videos because I have all this stuff in my head that I just need to regurgitate onto you guys. And, and you guys are like, mm, okay, well, mm, okay, well, well, we'll take that. I'm like, good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for taking my, my vomit and my jizz and my feces. Thank you. <laughs> so, but, um, yeah, so that's why I'm not really a fan of collectors. Um, they, they, most of the collectors, especially guys that are middlemen, um, they want the, the deal. And so they want, you know, the garage find, as they say, where, you know, they find, let's say, go back to the A1200. A they go back to the A1200. Uh, the best ones are like prototypes. Like if you can find a prototype that has like, say, you know, dual power and ground, you know what I mean? Or something like that. that to me, that seems even more rare because that never got released. But some people don't like that. Some people are like, no, I want the original, but I want it, you know, and they have all these demands and these expectations about what it should be and then what other people think and what other people will say. And so again, that's why I don't really like to deal with those guys. So, um, and you know, I just, just so you guys know, I still have a shit ton of those plugs, uh, the PPI plugs that I was uh, selling on eBay forever. Um, so if you do need them, I have them. And the guy that sells them on, uh, eBay, um, he wants them for what I think is for too cheap. So I don't mind undercutting them. I just don't want to go on eBay. So if you guys want them, uh, I think I do them for 10 shipped or just whatever, less than him. Um, so I gave him a chance to buy in. He didn't want to buy in, um, because it ended up costing me like two grand, uh, to do, the minimum order quantity and get them made straight out of straight out of China. And the ones I have are the larger PPI ones that have the, the little groove on them. And, uh, they're, um, they're meant for quote unquote full size four gauge. So, uh, there is another company Wico that did or does make, uh, the small four gauge, which technically does fit true four gauge, but the problem is a lot of people use CCA or they use oversized CCA and it doesn't, it has a hard time fitting. And plus the terminals are really close together. So I have these, the big ones from like the power class series. And, uh, if you want to use them for Orion, um, all you do is grind them and I can grind them ahead of time for you. And, uh, like I said, I, you know, we'll do them for like 10 bucks each shipped. And then if you, if you want to get 10 or more, then we can give you a price break on those. So I would love to just liquidate them to somebody along with the PPI, uh, PC. Yeah. The power class boards. Um, so yeah, if, you know, in fact, I'll go ahead and lower the price on those and I'll post a, I don't know if I want to post a link. I, I don't, again, I don't have a website. So a lot of this stuff is just like, 
uh, you know, I would love for people to come in and buy, you know, buy in. So, but uh, yeah, I'll do the whole PPI thing. All the PPI parts I got as far as, not the plugs, because those I have, that's a different uh, investment, I should say. But um, all the boards that I have, which is, you know, PC 2350, 2100, uh, the four channels, uh, some of the six channels, uh, those, are, and it's, it's over a thousand pounds worth. Um, somebody was asking one time for like an inventory. I'm like, dude, there's no inventory list. I'm, I'm not gonna sit there and count each board that you're going to end up buying for $3. Like, no, <laughs> that's, you know, part of the deals that I get is you shut up and you give them your money and then you go home, you know, just like the gambler, right? There's, 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 you know, you got to know when to hold them. You got to know when to fold them. You got to know when to walk away and you got to know when to run. So a lot of these deals that I'm giving you, uh, that I give people, you just, just make the best out of it. Uh, there's lots of money to be had if you can solve these problems. So I just don't have enough time. You got to understand that my, my, my schedule and my perspective, I'm looking 10 years in the future and I have no time for this stuff. So I'd rather cash out now and give it to somebody like probably that deal, uh, that I give for a thousand dollars, you get all the PPI boards and any of the other little you know, doodads that I have that, ha you know, come with it or whatever. Um, and it's, it's going to be at least two, if not three pallets worth very heavy pallets. And, uh, I'll do that for a thousand dollars plus shipping. So you, you do it for a thousand dollars. It's all yours, buddy. And then you're the one that you can either sell them individually. You can sell them for parts. You can build them out. They're really great for people that want to, um, uh, like if you had a bunch of burned up traces on a power class board and then you want to, you know, do a transplant. It's very time consuming, but you know, if you want the original, there you go. That's the original board. So, um, I do have pictures of all the, the ones that I have in it and it, you can see the rev in it. I usually put it in the, the title of the file name of the, the JPEG. And so I'd already did all that work. I just, they, I, I just been sitting on them. So if nobody takes it though, I'm probably going to trade it out to, uh, Jeremy at EBCO and uh work a deal out with him where he fixes amps for me and then i just give him all that stuff and then he's the the curator of the uh the ppi experience so but uh uh i'm home i'm hungry i'm gonna i gotta unload all this stuff from recoil that i got more returns um i go through and test them they're great and then i think we're doing now the components for only 35 dollars a set which is cheaper than amazon I can't really do that price shipped just because shipping is like, for me is like 10 bucks on a set of those. So it ends up being more expensive than Amazon. So if you are not local, just buy it on Amazon, support Larry. Uh, and I, I, like I said, take advantage of, of uh, Amazon's distribution and Larry's uh, generosity about trying to get the name out on these um, speakers. I did, I did do it will follow up on him to ask if he would make these more debadgeable. And he's like, no it's not just him though. He's got partners in China that seriously want to build a brand. And, uh, I, for me personally, I don't really see the recoil brand going anywhere, but it's one of those things where they lay down a bet, like say 10 or 20 grand. And then you see how it does. Right. And a lot of companies do this like DS 18. So they'll just make a ton of shit and then they see what sells. And then if it, if it, if it goes good and they are able to move it quickly enough, then guess what? That goes back into production. So, and that's the typical cycle for a lot of these companies, especially an upstart. Um, and especially when they have money, but they don't have the background of what's popular and what's going to sell and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, some things happen in the market too. Like, uh, I was reading this uh, article about, it was 20 different brands that went belly up, um, because of just mismanagement. So, um, sometimes things happen in the market. Uh, yeah. Earlier I was in a, um, NPR radio and, uh, they were talking about how Mar Mariah Carey in like 2000 was like fucking queen of the charts, dude. She had more number ones than anybody else. Albums all, every album was fucking multi-platinum. And then she signed out like a hundred million dollar deal with Virgin. And then she came out with glitter and it just bombed. And then she went on, um, uh, Carson Daly's show. I forget what it's called, whatever, whatever it's called. And, um, Carson called her crazy and <laughs> the rest is history. So some, sometimes things happen is it's not always good. I was, re I was watching a thing last night on, uh, Tesla and Elon was talking about how he's like, you know, one of the things that you expect nowadays in, in, in consumer electronics 
is the evolution. They're always making things better. And uh, that is true in consumer electronics to an extent. Sometimes it doesn't happen because, um, well, like Samsung, what they do is they, uh, uh, re or not, uh, Apple. Apple reintroduces stuff um, that, um, you know, Samsung came out with five years earlier. And, but because Apple people are stupid, it, whatever. Anyways, I got a customer here. I got to go. I love you. Bye.